Good morning, YouTube. It's Barbara Jean. I went and bought a, <clears throat> a little microphone, so I'm hoping this uh, helps the sound quality a little better. Um, I'm not sure because I can't hear myself on my, my speakers, but um, <clears throat> uh, I wanted to tell you something that ha happened to me when I was a child. But first, let me read a scripture to you. It's quite lang lengthy, so bear with me. Um, but it's a very, very important scripture. The, the Lord... Um, spoke to his disciples and it starts in John 6 starting at uh, verse 41 <clears throat> the Jews then murmured at him because he said I am the bread which came down from heaven and they said is this is this not this Jesus the son of Joseph whose father and mother we know how is it then that he saith I came down from heaven Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man came to me except the Father which hath sent me draw on him, or draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets that they shall all they shall all oh, excuse me, they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save, that he, save he which is of God. He hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath ev everlasting life. I am the bre that bread of life. Excuse me. It's a language I'm not used to speaking with Old English. I am that bread of life. That's John 6:48. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I give, uh, the, the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews thereof strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give, a, give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye shall have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, I live by my Father, and so that he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat, eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live for ever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Okay. Um, excuse me, I'm not used to this little thing. Anyway, um... This is a true story. <laughs> now, I'm talking about the Bible verse, but I'm also talking about what I'm going to tell you. Uh, when I was a little girl, not far from my house, only a few blocks away, and as a matter of fact, there was a, a, a wonderful family bakery. Now, when this bakery got started baking their breads and um, their cakes, and the cookies and donuts and everything else you could smell it for miles around in the neighborhood it was wonderful <laughs> it was a wonderful comforting lovely smell it was a family bakery it wasn't very big I mean it was big enough for all the things that they had to do and it um, <clears throat> uh, made cookies and big big items for most of western Canada or yeah, you know, western Canada BC mostly Vancouver and uh, they were quite well known for a particular cookie they used to make and it was called dad's cookies yes dad's cookies and when they made their dad's cookies I can tell you the smell and the aroma went through the whole neighborhood it was a lovely lovely smell you know you could smell the butter and the flour and the oatmeal and the sugar all blended together and to make this wonderful cookie um, we were our school that we um, attended, my sisters and brothers attended, was very close to this bakery. And so uh, on a field trip, we were all taken down there uh, as in classes um, one day. And we all did a tour of this bakery that was just down the street. And uh, 
And it was really very interesting. But at the end of the tour, all the children were given a box of dad's cookies, oatmeal cookies to take home. And uh, I can tell you, this was a real treat for me, uh, for our family, really, because we didn't have a lot of money. My mom had many children, <laughs> nine kids. And um, there wasn't always money to, available for luxuries such as cookies. Um, and so for a couple of weeks, so we were given, we had the luxury of not just having a peanut butter sandwich and, our, and an apple in our, in our lunch. We were given a little package, the packages of dad's cookies that were individually wrapped. And they were put into our lunch box. So I, at school, I would, I was, it was like, this was heaven for me just to be able to have these wonderful cookies in my lunch. And they were delicious. They tasted just as good as they smelled. And, um, Anyway, um, after that wonderful childhood memory, uh, a few years ago, I started cleaning house for this uh, old gentleman. His name is Charlie. What a lovely man he was. Unfortunately, he's gone now. But um, Charlie was a sweetheart. And, and uh, the woman I work with, we'd, you know, we were given a certain amount of time to clean his home. And, and we'd always clean his home in plenty of time to be able to sit down and have a cup of coffee with him at the end of our cleaning his home. And um, <clears throat> he would always serve us a cup of coffee, which he always had brewing. And uh, he'd always give us a, some of his dad's cookies. He always had a stack of dad's cookies for his grandchildren that came to the home. And so he always had something to give them. Anyway, <clears throat> after a few months of, you know, cleaning his home and <clears throat> sitting down and having a cup of coffee with him and eating these dad's cookies, suddenly I realized something. I <clears throat> walked away from there one day and I went in, I said to the woman I worked with, I said, you know, I, I hate those cookies. <laughs> I hate them. They're, they really taste awful. And I thought about it for a while, and I said, you know what, this is not, I, I think I've been living on a memory here. I've been living on what these cookies used to taste like. I, I'm living on that good memory of <clears throat> uh, that wonderful smell that used to smell from the bakery down the road and and the um, lovely taste of those wonderful crunchy cookies that tasted butter and oatmeal and sugar. This just doesn't taste the same. It doesn't. Ha it doesn't satisfy. And in fact, it kind of leaves me kind of queasy to my stomach. <laughs> and um, the other day, yesterday, I think I was cleaning somebody's home. So I, I mean, I have to tell you, after that moment, after I realized I hated these cookies, I stopped eating them. I just every time I would go to Charlie's, I would have to say gratefully, you know, you know, very kindly uh no thank you i'm not hungry <laughs> for cookies today because i really hated them and um but anyway <clears throat> yesterday i was cleaning somebody's home and there was a box of these dad's cookies these cookies by the way had gone big corporate i mean some corporation years ago uh got a hold of this recipe and i guess they bought out this little small family bakery and and uh decided to <clears throat> because these these cookies were so popular to um, market them big time with this big corporation. I think it's Christie who has the uh, rights for these cookies. And uh, <clears throat> they're marketed, <clears throat> excuse me, big time all around the world now, I think, or at least in North America. And uh, <clears throat> I saw this box of Dad's cookies sitting on the counter yesterday, and I suddenly realized something that the Lord was saying. And uh, that is the leaven of the Pharisees. It, it just suddenly struck me. Or <clears throat> the pure, beautiful manna, the Father's manna, which is the bread of life, Jesus Christ, has been changed in the churches. Just like a big corporation got a hold of these cookies, this wonderful family recipe that brought so many, so much comfort and joy to so many people. It's suddenly been changed into something that never was intended to be. These cookies, these dad's cookies are full of artificial ingredients and flavorless, tasteless, unsatisfying, and actually make you sick to your stomach. Cookies full of the world, worldly ingredients is not God's good, good uh, natural ingredients, full of the world's artificial chemical ingredients that, that, uh, destroy the body. And 
like I said, it suddenly it occurred to me, the leaven of the Pharisees. And when the church was established, right at the beginning, the big corporation, the world, got a hold of the church thinking, oh, we can make some money here. <laughs> Let's take this nice family business and make something evil out of it. Every church, you have to be really careful with corporate churches these days. Or not just these days, I think right from the start, Satan has got his foot in the door and has taken the pure gospel, the joyful, pure gospel, full of the Holy Spirit. People had peace and freedom, joy and love, eating the bread of life, which is Jesus Christ and his good news, his message of hope, that when you eat his flesh and drink his blood, you are part of a family and he will, you will never be snatched from him. And that should give us peace and joy and hope. And the big corporations got in there and immediately took this message and said, we can make money from this. We can control the people with this. And started to, to put their artificial ingredients that were never intended to be in these cookies, these manna, that God gives from heaven, and started to put the world ideologies in it, paganism in it, and they started to spread their lies. And there was partial truth in it, but not the full truth. Nothing that nourishes the soul. The first thing they did was take out the Holy Spirit. The comforting, loving Holy Spirit. And put in the spirit of religion. To put in the spirit of greed. Put, it, put in the spirit of fear. And took out the comfort and joy of the Holy Spirit. And they put all these artificial ingredients that actually eventually will kill you. I I have nothing against church. I love church. I mean, I used to attend quite regularly. Now I have to tell you sincerely, and, and this is not to say those who are attending church to get out of church, but a few years ago, the Lord, I was looking for another church to attend, and the Lord, I kept praying, Lord, where do you want me to go? And I would go from one church to the next and the next, and the Lord never spoke to me, and he hasn't spoken to me since about going to church to attend a church. I have church at home with my family. Or back to the family, family recipe, if you will. God's manna. We believe in Jesus. We believe in the simplicity and the natural ingredients that the Lord gave us. Just beware, people, of the leaven of the Pharisees. In fact, let me read that verse for you right now. Matthew 16, 11. How is it you do not understand that I speak? It is not to you concerning bread, that you should be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they understood that how they, that he bade them not to be aware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And then in Luke 12:1, in the meantime, when they were gathered together in an um, in an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto the, his disciples, first of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. These evil wolves in sheep's clothing come into the church and start spreading fear, greed, hypocrisy, and they remove the Holy Spirit power out of the church. That's how they control the people in these corporate churches. They've taken what was once a family business and made it a worldly concern. So anyway, I just don't live on a memory of dad's cookies as they used to be. Get back to the original recipe, people. It's simple. It's easy. It's natural. And it satisfies the soul. Anyway, I think that's all I need to say today. So God bless you all. Live in Jesus Christ. He is the answer. He will, you will never be snatched from his hands. He loves you. Trust in him. God bless.